let's let the function f be a linear function. Let's say let's let f of x equal 3x minus 2. Then we could ask, what is the slope of the graph of f at x equals 7? Well, that's pretty easy. By looking at the formula for f, we can see that the slope is 3. In fact, it's 3 at any point. In other words, f prime of 7 must be equal to 3, because the derivative is the slope. Well, that is easy enough. But can we calculate the slope, can we calculate this derivative, using the derivative formula? In this case, the derivative formula is overkill, since it's so simple to calculate the slope of a linear function. But it will give us some insight into how to use the formula by trying to use it for this simple case. The derivative formula is the formula for the slope of the tangent line as a limit of secant lines. So first, let's calculate the slope of a secant line using the values x0 and x0 plus delta x. The secant slope is just the change in f, or the change in the output, over the change in x, or the change in the input. In this case, it's f of x0 plus delta x minus f of x0 over delta x. So here we're going to use x0 equals 7, and let's make delta x be something small, let's say 0 0.1. So in this case, the secant slope is f of 7 plus 0 0.1 minus f of 7 over 0 0.1. Okay, this is just f of 7.1 minus f of 7 over 0 0.1. f of 7.1 is 19.3, f of 7 is 19, so the derivative of the secant line is 0 0.3 over 0 0.1, or just 3. That's not surprising. We knew the slope of the line is 3, and of course its secant line is the same thing, and so its slope must be 3. In fact, we didn't need to put in x0 equals 7 and delta x equals 0 0.1 to get 3. This should work in general. So if we take the general formula and plug in our expression for f, we should get 0 0.3. So f of x0 plus delta x is 3 times x0 plus delta x minus 2. And then we need to subtract off f of x0. So minus 3 of x0 minus 2 divided by delta x. Okay, so this is a slope of a generic secant line from the point x0 to the point x0 plus delta x. Well, most of the terms cancel, and we get that the slope is 3 times delta x over delta x, which is equal to 3. So the conclusion is the slope of any secant line is 3. Again, that's not surprising. We knew that ahead of time. But the point is that this formula gives us this 3 like it should. Okay, so the slope of any secant line is 3, but we need the slope of the tangent line, because that's the derivative. How do you go from the slope of the secant to the slope of the tangent? You need to let delta x go to 0. So we have to let delta x be smaller and smaller, and see what value we get for the secant slope as delta x gets closer and closer to 0. So the tangent slope is equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the secant slope, which we could write as delta f over delta x, change in output over change in input, which is the limit as delta x goes to 0 of our secant slope formula. Okay, this is pretty easy. We know what this is. It's just 3. So the tangent slope is the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the secant slope 3. Alright, so what is the limit of the number 3 as delta x goes to 0? 
Well, as delta x gets smaller and smaller, nothing happens to the number 3. It's always just 3. So this limit is just equal to the number 3. Because it's pretty obvious that as delta x goes to 0, this number 3 is going to be very close to the number 3. It's kind of a silly use of a limit here. Since the secant never changes, it's the same thing as the tangent. When we have nonlinear functions, this gets a little more interesting. But at least this exercise shows us how we can use the formula for the derivative to calculate that indeed the derivative of 3x minus 2 is 3. In other words, f prime of x is equal to 3, independent of the value of x. In particular, we asked at the beginning what f prime of 7 was, and again, it's just 3. The derivative of a linear function is a constant independent of x. So for this f, what is df dx? It's another way of writing the derivative. So df dx is just 3. So you'd be okay if I gave you the function, let's say, g of x is equal to mx plus b for some numbers m and b, but I'm not going to tell you what they are. Could you then calculate what the derivative g prime of x is? It's just the number m, the slope m, a constant independent of x. How about the function h of t equals q times t plus m? Do you see what the derivative dh dt is? Again, since it's a linear function, the derivative is a constant independent of t, and it's just the slope q. Of course, I could have written it h prime of t equals q. Same thing, right? Here's an important special case. What if we had the function f of x equals a constant? Let's call it b. For this function, what is the derivative df dx? A constant is a special case of a linear function. Its slope is 0. So the derivative df dx is 0. Again, a constant independent of x. A quick comment about limits. We saw that the limit of 3, as delta x goes to 0, is just 3. We can formulate this as a general rule for limits. If g of x is a constant function, let's say it's g of x equals c, some number c, then the limit of g of x for x approaching any number, let's call it a, is the limit as x approaches a of the number c, which is just c. We could think of it this way. If we plotted g of x, it would just be a horizontal line at height c. And then we pick some value of x, we'll call it a. And we wanted to know what was the limit of g of x as we got closer and closer to a. Well, g of x just gets closer and closer to the value c. It actually doesn't get closer and closer, because it is always c but I guess we could say it gets arbitrarily close to c as x approaches a. So this is how we can think of this rule for limits.